Inspections 101. We'd like to give our attention to Chiara Hankerson, Inspection Manager, and Kenneth Thomas, Lead Inspector for Libyan's HCVP Inspections Department. Thank you, John. Good morning. Welcome to Inspections 101. Today we will be, we'll provide some information on our processes and also hope to provide some tips that you will find useful in passing inspections. The inspections team has the role of maintaining and building good partnerships with our housing providers and providing participants with a safe, sanitary, and decent unit. To assist us in doing this, we follow a protocol type called HQS. Next slide, please. The HQS, or Housing Quality Standards, is the protocol type that is applied to all units on the Housing Trust Voucher Program. The Housing Quality Standard has 13 key aspects or areas. To give you an idea of some of the areas that this includes, it could be things like smoke detectors, lead-based paint, sanitary facilities, space, and um, security. It could be um, lead-based paint. Um, just to give you an idea of some of those key areas that we use as we're conducting our inspections. Um, to, we also take this protocol type to conduct four different types of inspections. Next slide. Some of these that you see listed here were mentioned earlier by uh, Tamika Melvin Kilcoff and as well as Shakika McIntyre. They did a, well, everyone did a fantastic job at presenting, but they definitely touched on a few of these and did a wonderful job explaining some of this. The types of inspections that we conduct are initial or move-in inspections. Those are those inspections that must be completed prior to a family moving into a unit, prior to any housing assistance payment being made, prior to um, the HAP contract being executed. The biannual inspections are those routine inspections that were mentioned uh, by Ms. McIntyre, I believe. We were doing these on an annual basis and now we're doing these on a biannual basis. These are just those uh, routine inspections that are done after family has been placed on the program. The uh, third type of inspections that we conduct is called special or complaint inspections. These can also include emergency inspections, but special inspections are those that um, we may receive from the public and they could be calls for, uh, there's a unit that someone believes is a part of our program and uh, maybe the grass is overgrown or that there's excessive trash in the yard. We will follow up on those if, if it's determined that it's a unit on our program. Special or complaint inspections can also include a call from the resident of the unit or the participant on the program that maybe there's no air conditioning or so in the, in the unit. We do follow up with the housing provider to make sure that the housing provider has been made aware of the issue in the unit. The fourth type of uh, inspections that we conduct is called quality control inspections. These inspections are currently um, conducted by someone on the supervisory level and also be completed by other qualified individuals. The quality control inspections are done at random. The units are selected from a pool of inspections that were recently conducted in the last 30 to 60 days. Next slide, please. The initial or move-in inspections, um, as Ms. McIntyre mentioned, um, she mentioned uh, some great detail on this. The request for tenancy approval, the RFTA paperwork is completed by both the resident and the, uh, or I should say participant, um, and the um, housing provider. Once that paperwork is completed, that paperwork is then submitted back to the agency for processing. After that processing is complete, that paperwork is then given to the inspections team so that an inspection can be set up and scheduled. The inspector, upon receiving that paperwork, will contact the housing pro provider directly. Usually this is by phone or by email. Um, if for some reason the date or time that has been set does not work for you, you would want to get back in touch with that um, inspector as soon as you can to make arrangements for a new date and a new time or a new time. Um, if you are in need of a call ahead, the inspector can, um, you can request of the inspector to call you about 15 to 20 minutes prior to arriving to your unit. So just as they wrap up at their last unit, if they have that request in, they will contact you about 15 to 20 minutes prior to arriving to your unit. Next slide, please. To provide some um, additional tips, 
we do encourage that the housing provider encourage their participants to view the unit, to uh, physically go by the unit and take a look at the unit, get an idea of the neighborhood. Some of our families are moving from other cities to Charlotte, and sometimes on occasion, they've only seen the units uh, maybe over the internet. So we do encourage that um, physical visit to the unit by that potential resident that's going into the unit. Uh, we ask our housing providers to make sure that the unit is moving ready. By moving ready, we ask that all utilities are turned on. So this would be gas, electric, or water. All of that needs to uh, function the day of the inspection. The, uh, the inspector may need to um, flush toilets. The inspector may need to just make sure that's a good heat source or air condition is working. So those utilities should be turned on on the day of inspection. If there are smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors required, they should be operating in place. So uh, definitely not hanging. They should be in place and operating like they should. Um, appliances that are going to be provided, such as stoves and refrigerators, we ask that they're in place and plugged in and functioning like they are designed to function. We do, um, as Ms. McIntyre mentioned, um, suggest that you check for leaks underneath the sinks. This is in the bathrooms and the kitchen. Um, this is something you want to do as you walk your property prior to the inspector's visit. Next slide. The inspection checklist um, we do provide, um, and you may have received it as a part of your registration today. If for some reason after this you, you have not received it or if you are in need of it, you can contact any staff person, including myself, and we'll make sure to get that um, checklist out to you. The checklist includes many items that could fail an inspection. So taking that checklist and walking the property uh, yourself, we feel that you'd be successful at passing the inspection by using the checklist as a guidance. The um, housing provider or representative, uh, again, we encourage you to visit the property prior to the inspector's arrival, whether it's a week before, a few days before, but you would want to walk the property prior to that inspector coming out to inspect your unit. We do ask our housing providers to go ahead and if they, if they would raise all the windows up, the inspectors will close them and make sure that they lock and um, open and shut. Um, if possible or when possible, you would want to have a maintenance or repair person on the day of inspection. Sometimes um, during the inspection, the uh, maintenance or repair person could um, maybe tighten something or repair something while that inspector is still there uh, conducting the inspection. Um, of course, they wouldn't be able to wait around for a uh, carpet to be installed or HVAC system, but they can definitely um, complete something like a, a loose uh, handle or faucet or maybe install a light globe, something that they can complete while the inspector is still there. That's just one less thing that the inspector has to note as a fail item. Also, as Ms. McIntyre suggested, we do encourage that the housing providers visit their properties at least once to twice a year. Um, some apartment communities already do this by way of um, the preventive maintenance schedule. They use the opportunity to check air filters to get an idea of the way that the unit is being kept. Um, this also gives you an opportunity to put your eyes on the unit in case there are maintenance concerns that have not been reported. Um, next slide, please. We have um, provided some pictures for you just to give you an idea of some things that could fail and then those same things being corrected. What you see here is a um, outlet cover. It has three potential fail items on it. It has a crack in it. There's overheating going on with it. And then at the bottom, you can see that it's painted over. So that would be a fail item. To show you a correct item, you have below one that is clear of all those deficiencies. Next slide, please. What you have in, these, in this photo, you have a, um, a situation where a handrail is needed. Above, you have uh, at least four risers. And so below, you see where the housing provider was able to install that handrail. And of course, that deficiency then passed the inspection. And this is actually of a, a failed item from an inspection that we conducted. What you see here is damage below a vent cover. So this, uh, the failed item, the first picture, it shows you an example of how vermin or pests can get into the unit. 
And then the picture below, of course, is the repaired item. We will have up next um, Kenny Thomas that will go over our biannual inspection process, also provide some more additional tips. And we will also um, cover some things that have been improved in our processes over the last few years. Thank you, Kenny. Hello everyone, my name is Kenny Thomas. I'm the lead inspector here at Olivia and I'd like to go over some process and useful tips. Notifications for the inspection date and time are provided to both parties. Housing providers are encouraged to attend, but generally not required to attend. All we need is someone at the unit who is 18 years of age or over for the inspector to gain access. Once the unit passes, the next inspection may be close to 21 to 24 months later from the date that the inspection passes. Next slide, please. Some more process and useful tips. If the participant is not home, a final inspection attempt is scheduled. At the second scheduled inspection attempt, the owner or representative may consider being present. They don't have to be present. Again, all we need is someone there who is 18 years of age or older, but if the owner wants to be present, of course they can. The inspection checklists are available as a guideline, and Ms. Hankerson touched on that earlier. The next slide, please. More process and useful tips. If the unit should have failed items, they should be corrected by the due date. The time frame for corrections are within 24 hours for life-threatening items such as inoperable smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. The time frame for corrections for non-life-threatening items are within 30 days of the inspection date that will be provided by the inspector. Next slide, please. As a result of talking to some of our housing providers, we have come up with some process improvements. The certification of occupancy is acceptable in lieu of an initial inspection. The certificate of occupancy is provided by the city of Charlotte. And if we receive that document, we can pass the unit without actually conducting a physical inspection. We would only use the certificate of occupancy for new units. We also allow for self-certification. And with self-certification, we would not go back to the unit to conduct the reinspection. What we would actually do is send you a self-certification form with the failed items and then ask you to complete that self-certification form and return it with photos or receipts by the reinspection date. Self-certification only applies when you have 10 or less non-life-threatening failed items. Also, with self-certification, participants may begin occupancy if the unit fails but meets HOTMA criteria. What that also means is that payments would be made effective from the date that the participant takes possession of the unit. Next slide, please. More process improvements. Routine program inspections are conducted biennially or every 21 to 24 months. We used to conduct those inspections every 12 months, but we've expanded that now to every 21 to 24 months. Self certifications, along with supporting documentation, are accepted instead of a physical reinspection for biennials, as I mentioned earlier. Supporting documentation may include photos, invoices for service, completed work orders, etc. Next slide, please. Once you get the self-certification form and it would be sent to you with the failed items, you would complete that form and sign it. Along with the resubmission of that form, you would send us the photos of corrected items. And what we would like with the photos is, is to focus on the failed item. In other words, let's say we're talking about an outlet that has failed. Uh, there are times where we will get photos of a, a corrected item, but instead of focusing maybe on that item, we may get a photo of a whole room when in fact all we, all we want to look at is that failed item. So please try to focus on the failed item when you send photos. Also, some photos 
might, requ might require a service such as pest control or unclogged toilet. Um, again, you can just submit invoices, receipts, or work orders for those items where photos don't show up. Next slide, please. Here is an example of a self-certification form. All you're doing as a housing provider is you're filling out the information on the right side at the top. Then you're coming down to the middle and checking the box that applies to you and you are signing and dating the form. You don't need to have the participant sign this form. All we need if you are a housing provider is a housing provider's signature. Next slide, please. Are there any questions? <clears throat> there is two questions. Okay. Is central air and heating required? Central air is not a requirement. However, heat is required. Next question. What modifications have been made to the inspection process due to COVID-19? We are currently working on a, a process uh, to conduct inspections due to COVID-19. It's not finalized yet, but that is still a work in, in progress. And uh, once that information, once we have that information, we will be able to notify participants and housing providers of that. 